looked a lot cuter earlier. Just got frizzy, I guess. Well, like I start off many of my videos, ignore my hair. I thought I'd be cute and do like a Sailor Moon hairstyle and then I did it off memory. So I forgot she didn't curl her hair. Wait a minute. These little bun things, honestly, I think I got some exercise points on my watch because they were um, a feat to get in there. <sighs> Thank goodness I have dark hair because you can't really see <laughs> what's going on anyways. So having said that, good morning everyone! <laughs> So for today's video, I am going to be doing a collection overview of the highly anticipated Sailor Moon by ColourPop collaboration. I have done a look for you guys in this video. I've also done full swatches as well as giving you guys my thoughts and review on this collection. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So here's the collection itself. I have to say, I'm very excited about this collection. Not only is it because it's my aesthetic, but boy does this bring back my childhood memories. I actually took a quiz and evidently yes, I am Sailor Moon. Fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by daylight. So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the eyeshadow palette. This is a 12 pan eyeshadow palette and this features a couple of their different formulations of eyeshadows. Packaging is on point, let's just put it that way. The fronts of some of the products have these transforming type of covers and I'll hopefully get the best footage so you guys can kind of see what they look like. But I mean, I love this. It's attention to detail and I think this is such a sweet touch for this collection. Now inside, this is what the eyeshadow palette looks like. I have to say, this palette kind of threw me for a loop the first time I used it and when I was doing the swatches for the B-roll. Some of the formulas of these eyeshadows I was a little confused by. For example, like this orange one here, which is Twilight Flash, it seemed a little chalky. You can actually see in the swatches. Some of them are coming off a little bit powdery. Also, this one, Silver Millennium, seems to be one of their softer, buttery, like super shock formulas. But overall, I really like the colors that they put in this. I feel like this is a very good representation of the Sailor Moon aesthetic. And as far as the pigmentation of these shadows go, again, kind of thrown off. Some of them seem to be a little bit more transparent, more of a wash of color, while others seem to be highly pigmented. Most notably, the bottom line here, this row, seem to be the most pigmented. I had no problem getting those colors to translate onto my eyes. However, these two were a little different. Now, I think that's intentional because I know with Asian cosmetic trends, they tend to be a little bit more of a wash of color. Actually, I got in a little bit of hot water. <laughs> For my recent review of the Pony Park by Morphe, the 351 Icy Palette or whatever that was called, that was definitely supposed to be a wash of color. I mean, the palette is a watercolor theme. And I had a lot of people in that video comment and be very upset that I didn't use a white eyeshadow base. However, in my opinion, in a video like this, I really shouldn't have to go through the extra loops to get pigmentation to show up. I feel like it's a better idea of what these will look like in person when you use these without such a heavy eyeshadow base. I mean, of course I'm using a primer, which I think that kind of went by some people. But yeah, this was kind of reminded me of that in the sense of like, I could get these to work if I really wanted to. Like I could definitely lay down the pigment heavily. I could use my fingers, which also translated the pigment a lot more opaquely onto my eyelids. And I can also use obviously a base that would make these look more vibrant. But I think that's kind of intentional with this palette in the sense you get the proof that they can do pigmentation. I mean, it's ColourPop, but you have some of these other more, I guess they're kind of versatile in the sense you can get different types of looks with these other types of eyeshadows. So kind of a different perspective. I mean, my perspective is gonna probably be slightly different since my background is mostly in Asian beauty. So I think this is super fun, super cute. I had a lot of fun playing around with this. As you can see, I almost got you guys every single eyeshadow in this palette on my eyelids, minus like two or three of them. I. <gasps> I think I did pretty good. I actually really like this look. And yes, I did prime my eyes. I just did not use a heavy base. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to these guys here because these were the ones that I pulled out of the PR package and was like, I don't even want to use them. So stinking cute. 
I mean, who doesn't love Luna as a character? I mean, I have my own Luna. Lucky. Let's see if I can get her to come. Lucky. Monkey baby. I need to bribe her with treats. Hi. Anyways, well, my Luna is obviously not as a reliable companion. There are two different shades that come in these pressed powdered blushes. Now, actually, believe it or not, this is my first time ever trying their powdered blush, and I think they're really nice. I'll show you guys the colors themselves. The first one we're gonna look at is Cat's Eye. Again, the powdered blushes have these beautiful transforming little pictures on the front of them, which again, I think is just a lovely touch. And Cat's Eye is this beautiful peach with kind of like a slight silver iridescence to it. There's definitely a little bit of shimmer particles in this formula. And of course it has Luna pressed on it, which is why I did not want to dip my brush and ruin it. But boy, is this pigmented. I was pleasantly surprised. I actually put cat's eye on the right side of my face and then I put from the moon on the left side of my face initially in the actual product swatches for the b-roll and as you can see there is a slight difference between the two colors like I said cat's eye is a little bit more of a peachy tone while from the moon is definitely like a hot Barbie pink I absolutely love this color and when I performed the swatches, I only dipped my brush in these a couple times and you can just see the pigmentation that these have. So these are gonna last me for quite some time. I just, I really love these. These are actually probably like my favorite part of the collection. So I guess let's go ahead and move on to the part of the collection that I was most confused by. And that is the Glitterly Obsessed Body Glitters. I, you know, I don't... <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and get into the actual colors themselves and then I'll get into my little rant about these because I've got some thoughts. So the first color we have here is Moonlight Legend. Moonlight Legend is the pink with kind of like a green blue iridescence to it. The glitter in this is chunky, which is why it is only for your body, not for your face. This is not cosmetic grade glitter. This is like craft grade glitter. Not craft mega cheese, but like craft. Michael's Art Store type of craft. Then we have Moon Prism Power, which is like a very fun purple with again that blue iridescence to it. This one actually has these stars and moons actually cut into some of the glitter. So again, these are really fun. However, for me, these are just not very practical. I don't know about you, but I just don't find myself as the type of girl who's running around with glitter on her body for the most part. I used to maybe in my college days, but not so much anymore now that I'm a 27 year old adult. <laughs> At least I like to think so. It does dry down, but then it gets like kind of, um, not crackly, but it flakes off almost. So I made a mess on my pants when I was doing the swatches of this because when it would dry on the back of my hand and then I would touch it or my hand would move, it would just kind of flake off. Then I put a little cleansing water on it and started to break up the glitter. So what's weird is it like flakes off, but it's also really hard to remove every single little particle. So just for the high maintenance factor of these, I don't really get the point. I also just don't find myself using these. I could maybe see if people go to like, Coachella's coming up. Maybe you would use something like this. These are definitely for a particular customer, which is not me. Last but not least, let's go over the two lip bundles that they have in this collection. The First one, I guess let's go over Daylight. Each of these bundles have an ultra glossy lip and an ultra blotted lip. And let's go over the ultra blotted lip because these are the formulas that I actually like out of these two. Now the ultra blotted lip formula for me definitely had a little bit of a learning curve. I kind of had to understand how the formula worked to get the point of it, I guess. Having understand how these work and what they're supposed to look like, I actually really like these only particular shades though. Like not every single shade works in these ultra blotted lip, at least for my skin tone and my lip condition. Your lips do have to be in really good shape for these to work as well, meaning I'm a bad lip picker and I also have very chapped and dry lips. So if any of those situations are going on, these are not the most flattering for me because they do emphasize kind of every single little crack. But if you're having a good lip day, like me today, 
Um, I really like how these look. I like that they dry down. I like that I can kind of blend them and feather them past my lip line because that's like what's really popular right now in Korean beauty. I also like that they look like a stain, but they don't actually stain your lips. So there's no commitment if you eventually want to change your lip look out later in the day. So I like the colors that these come in in this collection for the ultra blotted lips. So I'm actually wearing this guy right now, which is in Usagi. And I really like this color. But I definitely don't wear glitter lip glosses because when they dry down or they fade off your lips, I find the glitter gets all over my face and it's just not a cute look. Like it just looks like I ate a glitter popsicle. Huh? <laughs> I don't know if that visual is descriptive at all. But yeah, I mean it comes in the lip bundle so it's kind of fun to play around with. But if I were to pick between these two, I would definitely opt for the ultra blotted lip personally. Now, if you like gl glitter lip glosses, this would be right up your alley. Like, I could see why people like these. These are the two shades from the Moonlight Bundle. They do look kind of similar, which I was kind of surprised that they didn't do like polar opposites as far as colors go, because it's Moonlight and Daylight. The ultra Blotted Lip is definitely kind of a more blue pink, while this is more of a redder pink. And then the Glitter Lip Glosses for the Moonlight, the gloss is a little bit darker, as you could see there, and a little bit more of a raspberry. So um, they are definitely kind of a similar lip look, but different enough where I feel like you could warrant buying both of these and get, you know, your money's worth out of them if you like both the formulas. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this overview of the Sailor Moon by ColourPop collection. It is launching tomorrow. I'm going to do my best to get this video up tonight, and I'm also going to do a write-up on my website so you guys can check out close-up pictures of the collection, check out the packaging if you like to read words. It's over there down in the description box below. I will link it as well as the collection when it launches. And as always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy, and don't forget to rate comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.